Hey, Dan here, and welcome back to the bench. So, summer's finally here, and I figured I'd put together a little project uh, for the back garden. So what I picked up to work with today are a number of these really inexpensive solar pathway lights. Now, these came from the local dollar store, and for a buck, they're not bad. But I figured with the parts I've got laying around and the 3D printer, I could turn these into a nice little uh, piece for the back fence. So let me bring you along uh, while we take a look at what's inside one of these, do a little bit of 3D design and printing, and modify this to make a nice fixture I can put on the fences. All right, so let's see what's inside one of these. You know, to start with, we've got the usual little dinky plastic stake. We have a metal tube. We're getting rid of all of that, including this bottom diffuser. Not gonna need it. <laughs> and inside, we've got a single white LED dangling down, not pointed straight. If you're gonna use these as is, it's always a good idea to straighten those out. And a little amorphous solar panel. Usual, pull it, and we have light. It's actually a decent amount when it's fully charged. But let's see what's inside one of these. Let's also see if I can turn this one off. I can, not. <laughs> Set that to the side of the light so it's not running. So I've prepared one of these beforehand, and let me bring you in a bit closer. So what we get in one of these garden lights is a simple little control board with one of these unusual little four pin control chips. Now these actually aren't a bad little chip. They're a you know, application specific little chip just for little uh, solar lights and so forth. And it actually runs a switch mode boost converter with that one little inductor. The output power is actually set by the inductor so that can be, you know, changed based on how bright the LED needs to be. Uh, but the way it's set right now is probably all right. Uh, we'll see how much current it's currently delivering. Uh, but considering we have a fairly small solar panel and a fairly small battery, we'll probably leave that as is. As for the battery, this was a little bit disappointing when I opened this up. A lot of the new solar pathway lights are coming with either nickel metal hydride or lithium iron phosphate batteries, which are much easier when disposed of improperly. Uh, they don't contain nearly as many nasty metals as an ICAD does. But yes, these did come with nickel cadmium batteries. I'm not a fan of NICADs, only because they are improperly disposed of so often. All right here, battery must be recycled, but would you know that if you hadn't opened it? Probably not. A bunch of these probably end up in the landfill just because people don't even realize if you have rechargeable batteries that you need to dispose of, and you're in the U.S. or Canada, uh, take a look at call to recycle, either .com or .ca. They are also known as the Rechargeable Battery Recycling Coalition. All of the rechargeable battery manufacturers fund a program where they send uh, return shipping paid boxes to retailers who want to pick up batteries from their customers. So go to your local big box electronics or hardware store, or take a look on the website for any other places around that might take them. And if you don't want the NICADs, chuck them out there. That way they don't end up in the landfills, we don't end up with cadmium in the water. <laughs> but enough about that. Back to our little board here. So let me pull that LED out. Well, actually, we'll put the meter across it first and see how much short current we get. Uh, but then I also want to test and see how much current we get with the LED in line. Uh, I think the voltage drop from the diode might affect that quite a bit. Uh, and we'll see what we're working with. And that might tell me what kind of LED we can throw in here. Okay, so to start with, our LED is running at uh, 1.26 volts, which is interesting. It's actually fairly close to our battery voltage of 1.3. So there's very little regulation going on right now. And let's see what our short circuit current is. We're getting 42, yeah, about 42 milliamps, and that is falling. Battery's probably falling as well. And that it is. It's a very small capacity battery. It's only 200 milliamp hour battery. Uh, if I had a AAA nickel metal hydride, I would throw it in there. Uh, unfortunately, the chip that's being used isn't really appropriate for anything other than a, a 1.5 or 1.2 volt battery. I can't just throw a lithium-ion battery in here. The chip in particular 
is a YX8018. And let me pull up the data sheet for that. All right, so I've pulled down that data sheet. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find one that was translated, uh, but I did find some guys who had at least translated the inductor setting section. But this is the configuration we're dealing with. A very simple circuit, just the battery, solar cell, inductor, and LED, nothing else. Now, this can be set up to use a photoresistor to turn uh, everything on, and it can be put into a few other configurations. It shouldn't really matter for what we're doing. But this is the important part. Uh, the inductor there is a yellow, purple, brown, so a 470 microhenry inductor. Puts us between the 3 and 7 milliamp range. I'm figuring the fact that we had that shorted out is why we had such a high current. So I'm going to test that current uh, with the LED end circuit here. Uh, and then we'll go from there, see what we can toss in instead of the, the stock LED. Alright, so that is a much more reasonable rating, you know, 1.4 milliamps. It makes a lot more sense for the kind of uh, runtime this is supposed to have. But I want to see if we can go a little bit further than that. Will she work uh, with something a bit more powerful, like a small Piranha LED? This is some of my, some of my favorite little LEDs to work with. I just like the package and they tend to be decently high output. They're cheap enough if you don't mind waiting on a Chinese supplier. So I'm going to throw some leads on there and see if we can run this off of that same little driver circuit without having to change the inductor. So there we are with the little white Piranha LED, and that does throw a decent amount of light again. Uh, I'd say that's even better than the, the stock LED. Let's check the current on that real quick. And for that, I'm going to grab a different set of leads that will make this easier. And there we go, about 1.9 milliamps. It would be nice to run this a little bit, uh, a little bit stronger, but I'm gonna have to take a look and see if I have any different inductors. Either that, or I could throw in a different solar control chip. I actually have a few of a different make uh, that are meant for a higher power output. Well, let me take a look through what I've got, and we'll see what we do. So small inductors are definitely something I need to order more of. <laughs> I had to dig through my uh, bins of salvage to find. Something that would work. I did find some 9 microhenry inductors. Brings us up to almost 5.5 milliamps. Still fairly low uh, for the LED that we're driving. I want to try and push that a little bit further. Let me see if I can find anything else that we can use. So I had to dig through <laughs> quite a lot of my uh, scrap in to find a few decent inductors. I ended up uh, coming across a 32 microhenry and a couple of 39 microhenrys. Uh, they should work out for us. And let me throw this white LED on here again. See if I have the polarity correct. There we go. And that brings us up to about 6.6, 6.5 milliamps. Still really running this LED low. I'd like a little bit more power, but that will work, and that will run probably all night if the battery gets a decent charge. Now, I'm not just planning on running white. I've got a couple of other colors here, which let me see. 
We've got blue with a slightly lower forward voltage, running at a slightly higher current. And red, which, of course, the red LED has a much lower forward voltage. It's running at almost, yeah, almost 10 milliamps. But that'll be fine. Uh, that'll be a very vibrant color. I might end up doing a number of reds in the end, but uh, for today's project, we're only going to do one of each. What I'll do is I'll use the lower value inductor on the white, because that'll be the the hardest to see <laughs> out of the three. Uh, the two primary colors will be much more vibrant, you know, in pitch black or in the darkness. So I'll use the 39 microhenry inductors on those two. But now we've got to look into making a mount for this, because I don't want to use the regular stake. I want to put these on the fence posts. So here we are in SolidWorks. Uh, this is my preferred 3D CAD software. And I'm not going to bring you through, you know, the step-by-step -step design. I'm just going to show you the, you know, the outlines of what I've already made up here. So to start with, we need something to mount up with uh, the base of that solar garden light. And it had a three-finger mount with a slope to the front of it so that it can, you know, easily slide in and engage. And I've added relief on the back as well to help that uh, latch into place. And then we've got a little bit of depth until we hit the bottom of the solar light. Now from there, you know, I've capped the, uh, the rest of it, leaving a 5mm hole plus a little bit of tolerance for that LED. And given a, uh, a recess for that piranha LED to, you know, positively engage into. As well as a little extra support. Plenty of, uh, plenty of catchment for that to be adhered onto. And then I brought it out to the overall diameter of the solar light. Followed by the overall body. Now I'm not just going to leave this a solid tube. I'm going to cut away a profile here, so this looks like a, uh, well, <laughs> a bit of a decorative lighting piece. And then clean up the tail. To that, I added a channel across the back. Uh, this serves two purposes. This gives a flat mounting plane uh, for this to mount up against the beam. That way I'm not trying to mount a, you know, a tube to a flat surface where it's going to put a lot of stress right on the screw holes. This way it'll be engaged along that entire, you know, length. It's not going to go anywhere. And I've built this as kind of a drip channel as well to keep uh, water away from the screws and so forth. Our screw holes. And that's pretty much it. As for what I'm going to print this in, yeah, I'm going to throw this through my slicer. I'm going to print it in uh, PETG. It's a nice translucent plastic, and I think it'll hold up well enough outside. I'll, of course, find out in a few years' time. <laughs> and my brand of choice, you know, as always, is going to be Esun. It's nice, inexpensive stuff. Uh, but let me run this through my slicer. We'll throw it on the printer, uh, and I'll give you a quick time lapse of printing this up.
All right, so I've got a few prints off the printer. This is just one of the regular solar garden lights without the, you know, the new LED in it. You know, it's pretty decent. Let me shut off one of the lights here. It's a decent little light. It's a nice cast across the back, and I'm sure it'll look great, you know, outside in the dark. But, well, I, <laughs> I went a bit further, of course. Let me see if I can just set this in here, temporarily. Yeah, I think that'll work. A much brighter LED in there. And of course, what day is it that I'm uploading this? It's Memorial Day. So I've got them in red and blue as well. <laughs> Just patriotic colors here. And as for the others, yeah. These are going to look nice outside. I had played around with uh, sanding the top of the LEDs to diffuse them. Didn't really care for it. Plus, once these are up on the post, I think the uh, the drop that's thrown from them will look fairly nice. Don't want it all in a bloom across the yard under there. It's not going to be as noticeable. So let me get all of these put back together. I'm going to use a touch of adhesive just to hold the LEDs in place and get everything together, and I'll show you them all running. All right, so here we go. I've got the three of them mounted up. Uh, just on the board for now. <laughs> right, you can see there. Triggering on and off. But it looks like they worked out alright. Now all I've got to do is get them mounted on the fence out back. <laughs> 